try a little test now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Fucking hell, 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 fucking hell. Fuck, 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 bollock shit, piss away. Is that the punk test? That's the punk rock test. I thought that's what they use nowadays. Right, here we are. This is the questionnaire from adamant.net, submitted by the fan base, October 2001. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Right, question number one. Are you happy with the success of Antbox? Of course. Yes, of course I am. I'm, I'm, I'm thoroughly delighted. I'm, I'm just glad it, it did very, very well. It sold out, so we've got to go and print another lot. Yeah. Question number two. On the Antbox collection, we have had the pleasure of hearing Manners and Physique, alternative version. This version, in my humble opinion, was rather, really rather good. Good. Why wasn't it ever released commercial and why was it redone? So I'll, I'll say that again. Why wasn't it ever released commercially and why was it redone? Um, um, I don't know. The whole thing with MCA is I, I don't think they got it. They didn't get it from the start, so I mean, nobody knew what they wanted from us and so basically you just, you know, did the work. I mean, the work stands up now, but, you know, I've got no idea somebody up there didn't like the song and that was it, so that was it. I've got no, no explanation. Right, okay. Mm. So that's the answer to that one? That's the answer to that I one. don't know. I don't know, yeah. <coughs> right, okay. Also, oh, here's a good one. There was a lot of questions as to the collect correct lyric in the Manners and Physique demo. Can you clear up the lyrics? Is this verse in particular correct? One is see you sweat, crawling on your back, and stop your misbehaving like a, like it's coprophiliac. Yeah, that was one of the that was just one of the, the demo demo verses. So what you're listening to there is a is a is a demo that's sneaked out, and um, that's not the correct lyric, but it's a lyric that I I tried. No, it's based on uh, Alfred Hitchcock and Grace Kelly. Because Alfred Hitchcock was a scoprophiliac, he used to look at his leading ladies through a telescope. Is that what that means? That's what that means, yeah. Through a telescope? Yeah. Okay then. What are your feelings towards the music scene and industry nowadays? Do you think there is much room at the top for music from the heart, or do you think it's been commercialised too much? Oh, I, I think on one side it's karaoke, and on the other side it's... Uh, there's some good bands doing, you know, some good stuff. There's some, you know, nice, well punky bands out there, new bands that I see that are doing really well, and uh, long may they continue to do so. Right, yeah. So you don't think it's been too too, too commercialised? On one side, yeah, I think the pop the the, the pop charts is is is, is uh, you know. So I think all this discover a pop star and you know inventing yeah, uh, doing it is kind of you know. But um, on the other side, there are some, you know, new bands that are, that are, that are really good and young and well punky. So. Discovery pop stars really bollocks, I think. Yeah, well, it's just sort of ridiculous. All right, then. here we go then. Whatever happened to the songs recorded in 1977, these so-called Putney, Chelsea, Notting Hill gates, blueprints for later songs, or were they all songs that didn't make it, make it up to par? Songs like Bobby Boy, Whiplash Dance, Hooray I'm Hetero and London Sound. Yeah, they're all they're all they all exist and they're locked up nice and safely in my bank vault. Did you really write something for Hooray I'm Hetero? Yeah. And one day um, I will no doubt release them when I get the opportunity. Right. And does Marco like these early songs? I don't know, I've never heard them. Or the old ant songs in general. Uh, yes I do like the old ant songs in general. If you were stuck on a desert island and can only bring five records with you, what would they be? Um, well, that, that, <coughs> that can change all the time, but I'd say Virginia Plain, uh, Relax by Frankie Goes to Hollywood, Gene Genie by Bowie, oh no, Heroes by Bowie, I think, Heroes. Yeah. Um, 
I'd been uh, Lucas with a lid off by Lucas, which I like, and um, September in the Rain by Bona Washington. Alright. Mm. Name five bands that you're listening to at the moment. Five bands I'm listening to. Um, Placebo. Yeah. Rob Zombie. Yeah. Um, Marilyn Manson. Um, Black Motorcycle Rebel Club. You're listening to them. No, I'm not listening to them. You are. You eh? will be. Will I? Yeah. Will oh. be good. Okay. Uh, I'm listening to. Um, what else am I listening to? Yeah, Arrested Development. Yeah. And uh, I'm listening to what's the other one. I was listening to uh, uh, Genesis P. Orange yesterday. I was listening to Throbbing Gristle, which was uh, which one? Well, when he went in, when he did TV Two, you know, I was listening to his version of that song, Brian Jones. Oh, well, I was, this is about Brian yeah, Jones. Yeah, that's a good song. It's actually a good song. The one out song. the Rolling Stones. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, that that's a good song, but the rest of it's kind of rubbish. Pretty. Oh, and Leibach. I'm listening to Leibach a lot. Well, of course, everyone listens to Leibach. And Rammstein. <laughs> Which five bands do you absolutely right. dislike? Dislike? Yeah. Um, oh, Christ. Um, There's nothing you really dislike, is there? There's plenty I just switch off, but yeah. I've, always, I've always tended to switch the same bands off because they don't interest me. I don't like, uh, I don't like the sort of Jules Hollands of this world, I wouldn't watch him. He's not a band. He's a yeah, but when he plays, he's on everything. I don't, I, I, I don't like watching that kind of boogie woogie stuff. Oh. Um, I don't like any of that. And um, kind of Jamira Choir, I can do without. Um, what else can I do without? Um, Outside of that, it's outside of that. It's kind of there's not really too much to because I just switch it off. I don't get upset about it. Okay. No. <coughs> if you could collaborate with one person in the music biz today, who would that be and why? Who would that be? Yeah. Um, would it be Jamiro Quine? No. Would it be Mr. Blobby? No. I think it'd be Ma uh, Madonna. I was going to say Maradona, <laughs> <laughs> that would be a very good collaboration. Right. No, Madonna, because I, okay. I think she's fun, she's never really collaborated with anybody. No, she's well great. she has actually. Has she? Yeah. Who? Can't remember, but something. <laughs> <laughs> but she hasn't done it very much. No. Alright then, so Madonna, Madonna. Right, right to the top. Yeah. Right, what are your feelings about all the unreleased stuff that finds its way, sometimes in poor conditions, through unofficial sources to the hardcore ant fans? Will those songs ever find its way to, will those songs ever find their way to be cleaned up versions or do you think they should rest in peace? It's a bit general that question and it depends which songs you're talking about. Well there are only a certain number left, but all the bootlegs I've heard are, are pretty pretty shabby and I've got the masters, so like I say they're all locked away and when the time's appropriate and I get the uh, the right channels to do it, I'll produce them properly with the you know relevant artwork and sort of lyrics and everything. Until that time, people are just getting ripped off really by idiots. You know, I wouldn't buy a demo if you forced me. I, mean, I wouldn't buy a bootleg because I've never liked bootlegs. I think they're crap. Strong words indeed. Strong words indeed. Yeah, okay. Crap. Marco and Adam, what is your favourite song that you have written together and why? Well, it's a bit hard to say really. I like Stand and Deliver because it was quick and it went to number one and made loads of money. Um, well, it's not my favourite. Um, it's hard to answer that one. It's like asking about it. what is your favourite child, really. I don't have children, but anyway. Well, you've got to give them an answer. What? I can't. I can't give them an answer. You can't give them an answer? You mean yeah. like, you can't give them one answer to one question? Um, alright. Um, I don't know, I like Fend or Foe. Hmm. Interesting. I like Vigla Rock as well. Yeah, Vigla Rock's good. Um, I like Wonderful. I like them all really. Yeah. Well, not all of them, I don't like every single song. Well. Um, 
When you were first starting out with the ants, what inspired your songwriting? Also, how did you keep the creativity flowing so that you could have a new image and unique style with each al album? Uh, <clears throat> well, I've, I've got a very, I, I just get very bored after an album, you've done it, you know, you've exhausted the uh, all the ideas of one particular thing and uh, it's nice to start from scratch and change everything, the sound and the look and um, start fresh, so it was that and that had basically been influenced by the likes of David Bowie and Roxy Music, really. They were the ones that kept changing and evolving. Um, or even Elvis, you know, Elvis has changed and evolved, so... I think it's, you know, and the Beatles did as well. You know. Well, everyone, did it. everyone changes in the Yes, yeah. except the Ramones. Except the Ramones. But that's why you like them, because they don't, they never change. Well, they do now, so they're dead. Well, yeah. <coughs> Marco, what did guitarist inspired you while you were growing up and getting started as a musician? Oh, God. Um, Link Ray, Pete Townsend, Mick Ronson, Phil Manzanera. Lou Reed, mainly them really. Johnny Thunders. Johnny Thunders, yeah, I forgot about him. Right then. If there is any new music in the future, will you consider putting a sample on the Adam Ant Net site for us? Yes, we will consider it. Yeah, I'll consider it. There definitely will be new, there is new music and written new stuff, so it's just a <coughs> question of it coming out. Hopefully, it will come out in 2002. What are your feelings about the ad songs other bands covered? Have you ever heard them? And if so, which is the one you like most? Yeah, I, I think Nine Inch Nails did a very good version of Physical. And I think Robbie Williams did a cracking version of Ant Music. Yeah, we like that. And uh, who else? Um, yeah, I, I, I like him. And I think they, when they used um, Kings of the Wild Frontier for that Mitsubishi advert. That, that's not a cover, that doesn't count. Well, no. I, well, we like anything by anybody, don't we? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. It's just nice that, nice that they've done it. Yeah. Right. Adam and Marco, you must have heaps of demos and other stuff that never made into albums in addition to other odds and sods. Fucking so, don't, you know. I know, exactly. exactly. Like don't. Know. Such as Alfie Noakes. Alfie Noakes? Yeah. Alfie Noakes? No, we, we haven't got any. We haven't got I tell you, most of the stuff we've got, we've cleared out the coffers, mate. Everything we've got, every scrap, every every whisper we've ever made or every note will be is 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 more or less been out. Yeah, there's a little bit left. There's there's some left, but you know. I'll tell you what's not left though. What's definitely not not left is Alfie Noakes. No, oh. that must be a. I think it was when we were in the studio fucking around. No, Alfie Noakes is a jam that we did used to do on stage. Well, it's never been recorded. Um, we don't even know what it is, really. No, so. no that somebody's having you on. No, it really exists, but it's, it's never been recorded. So, well, I've never heard it, so you can probably never hear it either. No. In the song Shake Your Hips, who is that singing, singing back up for you? What is this song about? It was an easy get out of here. I see, it's Kevin, Kevin wrote it, young Kevin Mooney. So ask him. Yeah, ask him. Find him up and ask him. Ask him, yeah. And we don't know who was singing back up. I've got no clue. No, because Kevin recorded it. Yeah. <coughs> Will you ever release Who's a Who's a Goofy Who's a Groovy Bunny? Who's a Goofy Bunny? Who's a Goofy Bunny on an album for yeah. the Kings demos? Yes. Probably, yeah. Yes. 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 Like almost, I say almost definitely. Like I say, my ambition is to have everything out so that nothing can be bootlegged ever again. Right, okay. There is talk that an, an all ant and albums will be released next year, 2002, with extra songs. Is this still the plan? Well, yes, it is still the plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is still the plan, yeah. A master plan. If the world is, if the world is not, is still here in 2002. It's, a, it's an Uber plan. It's an Uber plan. Yeah. But yes, yes, extra tracks, 2002, all remastered. Groovy new covers. Well, sort of newish covers. Well, you are remastering the albums, aren't you? Yes, I am. Uh, yeah, Marco is uh, actually remastering all the uh, Sony catalogue, album for album. Not now, I'm not doing it now. But not now, but he's going to do it. So it will be out in 2000. It will be out, which is fantastic, really. Does the Xerox machine video still exist anywhere? 
because it has never been released in any compilation. Yes, it's in my bedroom. Right, okay. Locked away. What about the Table Talk and Car Trouble videos? Are in they my bedroom, bed? locked away. Right, okay. Yeah. Whereabouts in your bedroom? Not telling you. Are they in the box? In no, the I'm not telling you where they are. Are they in the wardrobe? I have to hide them. Because under the bed? My daughter might find them and oh, they're in trouble. Oh God, you yeah. I hide everything that is breakable. Yeah. Adam and Marco, who were your biggest influences out of all their mentors? Biggest mentor out of all, all, all my mentors. Yeah. What's that? Um, well, I'm going to say Brian Ferry. Mm. I'm going to say Iggy Pop, really. Oh, truthfully, I think Iggy. Iggy Pop? Yeah. yeah. I like Iggy Pop. I do like Iggy Pop. Since many people like Iggy Pop. I've always liked Iggy Pop. You've never liked him much, though, have you? I've never kind of run around sitting, you know, with an Iggy t-shirt and saying I love Iggy Pop, but I did meet Iggy Pop in 1977. Well, everyone's met Iggy Pop. Well, uh, no. But I like him, I think he's great. I think what did Iggy Pop say to you? Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, who are you? I'm Iggy Pop, you know. You know what he said to me? What? He said, Hi man. Yeah, that's good. Not like that, he said in a sort of Iggy voice. Yeah. Hi man. Hi man. No, Iggy's great. I mean, I think Iggy's the sort of originator and, you know, um, Metallic KO and Open Up and Bleed and all that stuff is great, you know, like the biker playing biker bars and getting bold and very reminiscent of my early, my early career. One thing that Iggy Pop said to me, I'll never forget one thing that Iggy Pop said to me. Hi, mate. Yeah. Who are you? Leave me alone. Stop calling me at this time. He is amazing. Have you seen the effort? He's done for Nike. No, I haven't. It's amazing. He's just standing there like that and he's just got, you know, no shirt on and he's got holding a mic, it's all wrapped around him. He's got a pair of like snake skin sort of black leather trousers and a pair of Nike trainers on and it's just looks great. He's only four foot seven. I know, he's a tiny little thing. Well, actually he's taller than that. But. I know. Um, Okay, your music has evolved quite a bit over time while still you staying uniquely yours. What areas types of music might you be interested in exploring in the future? Classical and jazz. Yes. And ambient. New Age? No, ambient. What's wrong with New Age? New Age is pretty good, but uh, ambient's better because you can do music that's kind of uh, used for hospitals and used for undergrounds and lifts and um, things like that. Is that weird? <laughs> Operating theatres. Now you've said that we're we'll clockmakers. Now you're going to have to do new age music. No, you're doing new age music. I'm not. You're the. Uh, excuse me. In this conversation, hands up all those people that have played um, outdoor festivals, especially the worst one, Glastonbury. That's not necessarily new age. Uh, uh, no, just put your hand up. Who's played Glastonbury? You have. You have, not me. <coughs> Spot the hippie. Oh, okay. You've been in the USA. <laughs> you've been. Oh, it's good. One. You've been in the USA a few times, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Which state of concert, concert was the most memorable and which was the worst? The worst was in... Uh, oh. The best was in, I think, down, um, down south, I think. The best of like in, in uh, Texas and stuff like that outdoors. The Greek theatre in LA was wonderful. Yeah. Outdoors, they're great places. The worst gigs, I would say, was... Um, I think Canada was the worst gig, it wasn't even America. You remember that gig we played and was all those sort of leather boys turned up and like started beating everybody up? I wasn't leather boys, it was skinheads. Skinheads, yeah. Yeah, I think that was anywhere where there were skinheads and my god there were a lot of them at that time. Thank heaven they all packed and packed it in and gone back and become um Mini tooth, toothbrush holes salesmen. Right. <coughs> okay. Uh I'm find a new question. Where do you see yourself in five years? Will you still be playing music, acting, producing? I was some, somewhere that you wanted to write a book in the future. Well, I've, written, <clears throat> I've been writing a book since 1977. Is it really long? Very long. It goes on forever and ever. And um, I've, I've no desire to write a novel. I'd like to write a good autobiography and publish diaries. And um, I plan to be, you know, doing as many projects as I can, you know, do well and fit in, you know, I don't think they'll all be music related. Do you plan to, do you, do you be, do you plan to be still alive in five years? Yeah. 
I plan to be around being, a, being uh, looking after my daughter. When do you plan to die? Um, I don't know, I've got no idea. Okay. Probably when I'm 100 and 100. 100? I'd like to make 100, I'd like to get a telegram from the Queen or the King as it would be then. What year were you born? 1954. Okay. So come 2054, mate. That's be all be done, all finished. That'd be it. And I'm on a big Craig Brothers burial, you know, like people pretending that they're scared. Scared of you. People, <laughs> people pretending that they're scared. Well, no, in my case, people pretending that they're, they're unhappy. People <laughs> pretending that they've never met you. Yeah. You know, typical, with flowers with my name on. Right. I know this may be a sore subject. Is there any hope for us in the US to get the Ant DVD since it's a different format? Any hints to what might be on it? Um, well, yeah, there is, yeah. Yeah, well, the same as, well, the, the American one would be the same as the English one. Yeah. Which has got uh, interviews with various people involved and... Uh, Rare footage and um, just things of interest. You know. Rare home movies. Home movies. No, that, home. There isn't any home movies. I found that, a home movie. Is it? Yeah. Or well, maybe there will be some home movies. Yeah. But I haven't seen it yet, so no. I've actually got your home movies when you were very young, but I won't, put, I won't bring that up. You were only about three. Oh, right. We have had records, books and films starring Adam Ant, but would you ever commission a film about his life and work? Sort of strangely worded question. Well, what I think it's asking is, um, I wouldn't, but I, if someone else did, I wouldn't have any objections. Yeah. Okay. Don't look at your what. Um, blah, blah blah blah. Right. Has fatherhood changed your life? And is your daughter a spitting image of you? Fatherhood has changed my life, and um, I've got a photograph of my daughter in my wallet, so it's best to just. <coughs> Get the photograph out and you can see for yourself how beautiful she is. Can you see that? Yes, we can see That's that. That's my daughter, Lily Caitlin. She's beautiful. See that? Look out, mate, I'll tell you. In the future, in about 2000 and whenever, 2000 and 2018, 2017, I think the rock and roll world will be again demolished by the, uh, the ant family. Yeah, <coughs> the Adams family. You got Marco, the Douglas right. Factory. All right, okay. This is a question for me now. Yeah. Do I plan on having kids? <sighs> I asked you that a couple yeah. of weeks ago. Well, right, well, ask me again then. Do you plan on having kids? Um, well, I don't plan on it, but um, you know, well, maybe one day. Not this week. Well, men can. Men are lucky. Men can see sight. A man, a man can have a kid when he's eighty. Oh, you know? maybe I'll have a kid when I'm eighty then. It's so, oh, not, not much. Not much football in the park, I'm 80, I suppose. But there wouldn't be much football in the park now. I'll tell you what, it's very, very, very... You need a lot of energy to do it, you know what I mean? I can see why people have their children when they're young, because uh, having had my, my daughter later on in life, I, I'm actually, you know, it's, it, it, it isn't... You haven't got the same stamina. But then again, you shouldn't have, because, no, you know... because you're old. Because you're older. Yeah. <sighs> Do you surf the net and look for porn online? No. If you aren't online, what do you think of porn in general? Uh. Well, let me just let me just let me just qualify that by saying he's not online, so he doesn't look for porn. I am, and I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, Marco, you have to speak to Marco about any, everything mechanical or electrical because I'm not. I'm not involved in that. No, I'm, um, I'm still trying to work my VD VCR. I don't look for porn online. Um, yes, I've looked at it, but it's kind of boring. And what I think of porn, I'm, I don't care really. It's neither here nor there. Yeah, that's true. You know, I think if you just if you don't like it, ignore it. Do you still own property in Tennessee, and do but do you vacation there much? No, I sold it. Um, do you still own your bondage kit from the 70s and most of your outfits from the 80s? Yes. Marco, do you still have your pump wardrobe and your outfits from the 80s? Yes. What's your fo favourite foods you like to eat? My, me? Yeah, yeah. Um, pasta. I'd say pasta. Uh, chicken. Uh, ch uh, chicken pollo. Uh, you know, yeah, pasta, definitely. Alright, okay. Well, here's a very complicated question that I'll only read a bit of. Yeah. In what way or to what extent did the art of Hogarth shape your world view and your music? 
very heavily, um, as did all the 18th century and the whole attitude towards life and the whole um, the kind of uh, the cross between it being so romantic and beautiful on one hand and so disgustingly filthy and debauched on the other. Um, and I think it produced some of the most vibrant work that any century has produced. And it was the age of enlightenment when everything kind of began. So I, I, I look back, I'd rather look back to that than look back um, to the, you know, the 50s or the, the 20s or, you know, the 60s, you know, something near. I can, strangely, I can relate more to that. Okay. We all know about Adam's fascination with 18th century England. If he has, if he has lived in that century, hang on, if he had lived in that century, what does he envisage himself as his lifestyle, occupation, persona. He played so many roles over the years, does he see himself as one of his characters? No, absolutely not. If I did live in the 18th century, I would want to have been wealthy. I'd want to have Obviously. had money. Because not having money in the 18th century was a worry, terrible worry. So I would have liked to have been a musician in the 18th century. You know, you could make quite a good living. Um, but in the 18th century, if you were, I'd like to have been at court. I'd like to have been an aristocrat and been able to go to court and uh, see George the Third and George the Fourth. I'd like to have been Beau Brummel, but ended up better. Right. So you wanted to be a friend of George the Third, did you? Not well, not necessarily George. Yeah. You know, George the Third, George the Fourth. There were some very foxy ladies around at that time, and people like Byron, who were kind of had a whole Lady Caroline Lamb. Well, you want to hang out with that? Yeah. Or? Oh, okay. Yeah, definitely. Adam and Marco, I have always wanted to know what it is that you admire about each other. You have been together, it says here in inverted commas, so long now, and I wondered what is it that makes you two click? There's a big silence now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, well, from my point of view, it's because we never really, we, we don't hang out that much outside of the work, you know? We do, a bit. we do a bit, but not. We do more now, but um, we don't actually flog it to death. You know, some. You know, we kind of tend to get ideas and then bring them in and and, and, and have something to work on. Whereas I think a lot of um, a lot of writers hang out together, just you know, in a, in a band situation. That's always been a bit well, they're dull. They're forced to, aren't they? Yeah, they're forced to. Well, yeah, that's what yeah, that'll do. Um, Adam, did you recently attend the VH1 Fashion Show Awards? No. Why not? I was invited. <laughs> that was the best reason of the lot. Yeah, I didn't go either. The same reason because I wasn't invited. Uh. Adam, it says on your CV that you're working your autobiography. Is this true? Yeah. My oh. diaries. I'm working on my diaries. My diaries um, should be, uh, they're, they're well on the way. And my autobiography, my early life, as I've written it, it's done and dusted, so I'm just gonna but I'm gonna put the diaries out first. The punk diaries. And when can we hope to read this these works of title fantasy? As soon as somebody um, is smart enough to sign it all up and uh, and take the time to type out some of my scrawls. Right. Okay. And what about take the bits out that aren't true? It's all true. They'd have to they'd have to take bits out to protect the to protect the guilty and the innocent, but it's all true. Okay. What are your views on astrology? Um I believe in basic I think that, uh, very basically I believe in the kind of character of certain certain people, you know, like I'm a Scorpio and and everything I read about Scorpio is kinda of, I am pretty much a Scorpio, a triple Scorpio. But outside of that I think it's I think it's very scientific. I think that you know you've got to get into it. If you get into it, and you, if you're into the whole astrological thing, then it obviously becomes a truth for you. It's the same as um, it's a form of science. It, you know, it's alchemy, but it's a form of science. It's just um, it's it's as valid if you if you um, if you do if you get into it. I think. Right. So you like it then. I quite like it because sometimes if you read it, it's all auto suggestion. If you read something and yeah, it suggests something, 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 you get in a good mood. It's not so good if it says, you know, <laughs> if you're going to a meeting, it says, don't go to any meetings. <laughs> don't, don't speak to anybody with dark hair. Yeah, don't go out today. See, that isn't really astrology. That's just, you know, that, that's stupid. But the actual, if you ever have your 
you know, uh, if you get it seriously, get your your hand read properly and get it all sort of, um, uh, you know, which I've had a couple of times, it is remarkably accurate. If you had your sort of signs and your stars done, it, it is remarkably accurate. Okay. Yes. Do you ever surf the net? No. Right. And check out the sites dedicated to yourself called the ants? No. no. And what do you think about the, those sites and the people who keep them keep yeah. them up and running? Wonderful. Fantastic. I'm very flattered and I'm very happy. So he doesn't know where he thinks the sites he's never seen them? Well, I've seen some, but I kind of... Um, it's best not to look at them. Yeah, it's a bit kind of like reading a, a review. You know, it's kind of... My job is to... My job is to do the work. My job is not to review the work. My job's, job is to do the work, and that's what I'm doing. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm on to the next record. I'm not. You know. Very, very good question. Very good answer. What would you like to say to all those hardcore ant fans that have supported you throughout the years? Um. Well, thank you. I'm uh, like I say. You know, it's very flattering that people stick with you through thick and thin. And I'm never going to be an artist that puts records out every two weeks. So it's going to be. You know gaps between records, but um, yeah, that's for a reason. So when those reasons are overcome, there, there there comes a new record, and there will be a new record. And all that matters is that there's new material. So there is, there will be, there's new material coming, and there will always be new material coming. Right. Did you have a chance to read that book, Ant Musing by Ant Musings by Keats Babel? No, 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 I've never heard of it. <coughs> Did you anticipate the flood of babies named Adam when you chose that as your name? No. <laughs> Not at all. I would imagine the kids born in 81, there must be a lot of Adams. Yeah, there must be loads. It's kind of cool. Without any markers, uh, I should have called it, should have chosen another name. Yeah. You know, Colin. My favourite rock star. No, Barkley. 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 Shaftsbury. What are Adam's Denison. Shut up now. What are Adam's views on the conventions and what are his reasons for deciding not to attend them? <coughs> um, I think they're well, I think they're great. I think it's I think it's you know, again it's it's surprising, it's very um, flattering for both of us. Um, it makes you feel good. Uh, it makes you feel that, you know, people are into very detail every detail of what you do. I I choose to stay out of it because um, I think it, it would disrupt it, and uh, I, I like I say, I, 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 that would be like... Um, yeah, it would, end, it, it would certainly end the party. It would end the party, and I, I think it's, it's kind of... The, the place I like to meet my public is on the stage, because I think that's the best place for me. You know what I mean? It's more interesting. Now, Adam ends any party that he walks into, people get all self-conscious. Marco, what did you think of this year's convention since it was your first one? I thought it was a good laugh, actually. Will you attend another again? I may do. Do you have any acting projects in the works? Me? Yeah. Um, You'll know later. No, really. I've, I've, um, I'm just, I've been focusing on the music, really, and just putting this book together. And um, I think now, you know, I've... I, I feel like I've, I've done a lot of work as an actor, I've paid my dues, I've studied very hard and um, I'm quite selective about what I do now so it would have to be something that, that I, um, I really wanted to do and that I, I felt was going to be right and uh, I'd like to do something, I'd really enjoy doing something historical, you know, something period setting, I've never done that really so I'd like to do something like that but I'm not, I'm not holding my breath, you know what I mean. You always want to do something historical. Yeah, but I've never done that really, it's always been futuristic. Are there any questions you want to ask us, no, the fans? None at all. Really? Or nothing? Um, no, well, you know... Um, what are you doing later? No, not really. I'd, um, just hope you're taking care of yourself, not taking any drugs, being drug free, like Marco, and um, and not hurting people, you know, getting your kicks without hurting other people. I think they're probably not hurting people, but I think they're taking loads of drugs. Well, they are. They're hurting themselves. They're taking loads of drugs, I suppose. But you know, I mean, you know, whatever. Don't believe it. It's all a big fake. All this drugs business. It's it's it's, it's a it's a it's a it's a blinking um, minefield. Don't go there. Yeah, I think they all know that. Um, <laughs> still do it. Don't they? <laughs> still, yeah. Everyone knows that, but they still do it. Yeah. Um, mm. Is there anyone you would like to say hello to online? 
No, because you won't sell loads of them, you'd find them up, wouldn't you? Yeah. Like I say, I'm not mechanical, so I'm not, not technological. I read it, I'm reading a lot about it. I will say that I'm actually trying to educate myself. I, I actually got a bit of a, a hang on it now, but um, it doesn't, doesn't appeal to me at all. It's, it's just unappealing to me. It's about as appealing to me as, um, you know, uh, I don't know, getting the coal in or putting the rubbish out. Really? Yeah, it okay. really is. Right. Mm. Right. And it says here at the end, Adam and Marco, your, fa your fans online send their love. Mm -hmm. We send our love back. Right. And happy birthday to Adam. Thank you very much. I'm very... I'm very old. <laughs> I'm very old. I'm very old. In fact, I forgot how old I was. I'm so old that I forgot how old I was. Well, I don't know how old you are. Because I thought I was 48, but I'm not. I'm 47, apparently. So I'm a year younger than I thought I was, which is pretty good. How do you get so old you forget how old you are? Well, don't you, the older you get, things fall out, yeah. things drop, yeah. um, things um, disappear, and brain cells are one of them. Yeah, and your memory, it must be murder being a, a stage actor. What, be a very old stage actor? Be a very old stage actor, doing, you know, having to sort of do you know, like really classical plays and, and, and because your memory, it, it's not like a lack of memory, it's just, it, it's not, it, it, it will go, for it, it will go and then it's, you know, strange and then it'll come back again but it goes and it's, I've read about it, it's perfectly natural but it must be, it happened to Laurence Olivier, a lot, he, he, he had occasions with that, he, he had a, he actually had to stop a performance once and step forward and say, ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm, I'm very old. I can't continue. No, this wasn't when he was that old. It's when he was kind of at his peak, you know. And he stepped forward and... Uh, for an actor, that's a very honest thing to do, you know. Um, and it's doing... I think doing theatres, you know, uh, the, older, the older you get as an actor, it's, it's sort of... It's very hard. Because with musicians, you know, you just become more jazzy like anything you do, it's like a jazz musician, you just blow, right? If, you're, if you sing a song and you sing the wrong verse, people think that's great. You know, well, they, you, you sang that, you know, it's great. And, um, or you change the words, it's fantastic. Makes it interesting, but right. in, in other things, if you're a scientist or a surgeon, or, you know, somebody that, you know, has it, got to do it right, the older you get, it's, you know, it's yeah. tough. So basically, if you're a musician, you can just sort of, as you get older and you can't play anymore, you, everything just gets looser and looser yeah. and you can just sort of wing it, really. I think a lot of them can. I, I, I think you can get away with things you can't get away with in classical music. That's for, that's for damn certain. I mean, classical musicians get, and opera singers, they have to, you know. I mean, how many pop musicians go in a room every day and, and practice for four hours? No. None. How many, and that's all classical people do, they actually go in there. I know, because there's a guy next door you know, plays the, the viola and he, or the, uh, no, the cello, and he's in there banging away hour after hour after hour. Well, how many, cl how many classical musicians just go into the studio and just improvise off the cuff? Well, they don't. They don't, because so they read it off a bit of paper. They read it off a piece of paper, but, you know, they, there you have it, really. What they should do is just do Stockhausen, then they can just, like, just <laughs> bang a plate. Or be silent. <laughs> be silent, bang a plate. Or, f yeah, be totally silent Sneeze. three and a half hours. Yeah. That, that, to me, that I think Stockhausen had it sorted out. I mean, he really did have it sorted yeah. out, mate. Because I mean, you think about it, what he did—a revolution, created a musical revolution. We're not talking a, an absolute revolution where people were up in arms about it. And uh, and now, you know, he does the sort of festival hall, like sells it out and just well, horses around. And he kind of makes it legitimate. It's, it's legitimate now. It's, it's it's totally legitimate. And I think. Maybe in another 20 years, you'll have sort of the surviving punk people like Johnny Rotten, people like that. Although he's probably be too angry to do it. But um, if they're still around, if they if they can overcome their bitterness, um, it'd be quite nice for them to be um, performing their, their songs in a sort of modern way. I'd like to do that. I'd like, to, or, or that, or do a Rat Pack version of the songs. You know what I mean? Hey. Stand, that deep, deep, you know, it's, uh, I, I think I think musicians get musicians could really take a, a page out of Frank Sinatra's book. That's what Sinatra always had. He was always able to like laugh at himself and always had a sense of humour. All those guys, even Miles Davis, you know, they, they were all like total piss takers. 
Carl's dad's got no sense of humour. Oh, he has. He has. I think he has. And I know because I watch BBC Two and I read books about him. And I saw him play once. Was he funny? No, he was not funny. He didn't tell any jokes. But he was fantastic. I'm so pleased I saw him. Oh, right. And I met Mark Bolan. Didn't was I? Was he funny? He was very nice. He wasn't funny, but he was very sweet. He was short. Tiny little. He wasn't short. He was perfect. It's like Iggy. There was, he was perfectly proportioned, so you didn't think, oh, he, you know when you see someone on television, well, like an they look man. big, and then you, no, you see someone on television like Mick Jagger or someone, or, or Bolan, and you think they're, you know, you imagine they're pretty big, and then when you see them in real life, they're really quite petite, Yeah. and it shocked you, you think, God. Jagger's not small, though, is he? No, he's 5'7", but, but Bolan was tiny, little, but very, it's like the kid out of Placebo, he's a little tiny tot as well, but he looks great. Because he's well proportioned, you know, it's kind of like, on stage you can't really tell, on stage it doesn't notice that much, and on TV it doesn't notice that much, but I think uh, a lot of the early Hollywood actors had to be small. To fit in the camera? To, well, that, largely that, but apparently it was part of, you know, the James Cagney and the Charlie Chaplins and the Spencer Tracys, and um, they were quite small. James Cagney was small, he was tiny. Mm. Fantastic. So... On that note, on that note, on that, on that, that, I'd like to thank the uh, company that's made this wonderful Sony. Is it a Sony camera? Yes. It's wonderful technology which enables me and Marco to just uh, communicate online. And I think it's a wonderful invention. And I look forward to the time when I can get one myself that I don't have to even touch. Right. And then I'll become technological. Just get it and just go, go. Yeah, that's what you do with this. You just stick it on here. And just, you think you really think I do really think I know anything about this camera? Well, I wouldn't want to press a button. I just want it to go. You do have to read the instructions, which I did before you got here. That's true. But I wouldn't want to do that. I just want to put it, take it out of the box, put it down, go, and then it goes. That's right. what I like. That's the sort of technology I like. Okay. Well, it's like tea bags. <coughs> Get them out of the bag. You put it in the cup. You pour the water on. Go. Right. That's my idea of technology. Or you get the plug, the kettle, you plug it in the yeah. wall, you switch it on, go. It's like the fridge. Yeah. Go. Okay. Unfortunately, it doesn't really work like that yet. Not yet, but it will do. Yes, but you might be dead by that time. No, it'll be about 25, 25 years. To well, now you can actually go in a room and say on and put the lights on just for your voice, can't you? Yeah, but it does, doesn't really work that well. No, it doesn't really. But I don't, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Right then. That was wonderful, and I'll put on my Bono glasses now. In fact, these aren't Bono glasses, I got these ages ago, but...